Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Game Design Lab. I am Kat Kruger. My pronouns are she, her. And today we're going to be um, we're going to design a 5e bard. Um, talked about this in um, my solo RPG um, uh, stream on Mondays. Uh, and we I think I think that's when I talked about it. Anyway, uh, I have a I, I was playing a character called uh, Mac Guffin. Uh, in a solo RPG uh, called Delivered by Cage uh, Friedrichman. And um, this character was very chaotic, to say the least. And I think uh, at some point during in chat, we talked about possibly uh, creating a, a bard in the game design lab. So here I am designing exactly that. Um, just uh, just gonna play around with uh, some ideas of maybe uh, maybe using like it, taking inspiration from wild magic um, and creating this college of chaos. Maybe we'll name it something else, but um, um, that's the that's the starting point anyway. <laughs> and um, let's see, I guess. Uh, you know, uh, I haven't really designed a lot of, uh, of subclasses um, for my freelance work. I'm a freelance narrative game designer uh, and an author. Um, I've worked on uh, a number of uh, projects, uh, mostly, you know, mostly adventures, mostly um, monster design. Um, I'm currently working on a personal project that um, is designing a lot of uh, subclasses. So. Um, it's been a lot of fun and interesting. Um, but what I'm going to do is, uh, with most of the game design labs, I post my content on Patreon. Um, and I, I think with this one, it's probably going to get stretched out over a couple sessions here because subclasses are uh, very complex and um, they require a lot more thought uh, and often more playtesting. Um, not, not to say that monsters and, and other things don't require um, uh, a lot of playtesting, but I feel like um, subclasses, there's a lot that, um, a lot more that you need to take into account um, to make it fun um, to play and not OP, but also not underpowered. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, Bard subclass is what we're looking for. And uh, I think one of the first things I wanted to do is just sort of like, I did design, um, you know, a couple of subclasses. So I'm going to just show some of my work here. Um, this is from Venture Maiden's campaign guide. Um, and I created a cleric of the fate domain. Um, and I'm just going to show, you know, an example, a, a couple examples here of, you know, creating subclasses. So each subclass, uh, I guess another thing I should say is, you know, with the game design labs, I am trying to come at this from the perspective of um, maybe not necessarily uh, an advanced game designer. I am hopeful that this is going to help new designers um, or people who want to homebrew um, things uh, to be able to get it get at it from more of an entry entry level uh, perspective. So I'm gonna try. I, I know when I did my monster design, it I you know in retrospect I feel like I I went through it a little too quickly and skipped over a few things. So I'm gonna try to slow it down, break it down a little bit more, um, and um, and then you know the next time we design a monster, I will do the same thing. Um, so with this as an example, Cleric of the Fate Domain, you know, you've got, you know, your starting point is, is, you know, the, that write-up blurb at the, at the start. And, um, it's the concept of what the subclass is. So with this Fate Domain, it's essentially tapping into, um, destiny and seeing the future and maybe playing around with it. Um, so this type of cleric is, you know, prophetic. Um, 
they can see things that are about to come. They can change things. Um, I do see that there's an ad break coming up on Twitch here, so I'm probably going to pause for a moment just to just so you can look through what I'm doing here. Hi, socialist by hello, punk junior, first time chatter. <laughs> yes, um, I'm going to make sure that there's so here's the thing. A lot of time listener, first time caller. Thank you. Um, here's the thing. Sometimes I get these. Um, uh, notifications that an ad is going to come and then I don't actually see an ad. I don't know if you've seen an ad or not, but I have not. So I'm just going to continue here. Uh, um, let's see. We've got, uh, so we've got fate domain features. Um, and in this case, we've got the first, first, second, sixth, eighth, and 17th. And then with, um, so that means at, at each of those levels, something is supposed to happen. Now I have ad break in progress. I'm still getting used to being an affiliate here, so you're gonna to have to bear with me. Just for funsies, yeah. <laughs> it's telling me that there's an ad break going on right now, so I don't know. Um, Oh, and thank you, Punk Junior, for your sub. That's very kind of you. Um, all right, so um, we're just going to carry on. Um, and what I designed here was, you know, um, a, f uh, a few things that sort of um, fit thematically. So, you know, at first level, there's this twist of fate, the channel divinity feature that uh, a cleric gets. There was a destiny bond. Um, and it's sort of weaving these threads of fate magically. Um, we've also got a channel divinity with the gift of foresight. So seeing into the future and making changes that way. Um, and, and then we have divine strike, um, which, you know, is just, um, just a, a cleric sort of feature. And then there's Sibylline site, which is uh, you uh, at a 17th level, you get to um, gain true sight. Um, <laughs> my kid is out, outside my door right now. Um, and then you can't use this feature again until you complete the short or long rest. So that's just an example of um, some of the work I've done before. I think the other one that I did here was a sorcerer of Wild's Heart. Yeah. But that is not what we're here for today. Uh, uh, what we're here for is doing the Bard subclass. And I'm thinking College of Chaos because we're basing it on um, on Matt Guffin, the uh, Futurama-inspired space courier that I was playing um, in my Monday streams up until recently. <laughs> And um, one of the fun things that I found was, um, I think a couple streams ago when I was doing the monster, uh, monster creation, one of the things about D&D Beyond, like I love using D&D Beyond. Um, however, the UI for Homebrew is, um, uh, it basically leaves leaves everything sort of open to to you, um, the user, knowing what you're supposed to do versus some of these other um, free online tools that kind of give a little bit more guidance. Um, however, I recently, as I was digging through uh, digging through 
uh, DNT Beyond and other s support tools that might be available uh, through Wizards of the Coast. I did find there is a support um, site and there's a subclass tutorial here. Um, so as a new designer, you're probably wondering, you might be wondering, you know, when do the feats actually uh, change for each of the subclasses? And this gives you a very clear guideline here. So when we look at this, um, and this is on dndbeyond-support.wizards.com, um, you can find features at the correct levels. Um, and this is just ensuring that there's a balance um, in the features that you design. So what we're looking for here specifically is the Bard core class and the feature levels for the subclass come in at levels 3, 6, and 14. Not quite as complicated as um, designing some of these other ones here. Um, so I've taken this information, put it into my journal, over here, so we'll be ready um, for that to come in. Now, I think, as I said it, when I when I was showing the um, uh, cleric subclass, one of the key things you need to do before you start any of this is try to figure out what it is that your subclass is going to do that's different than what's already available. Um, so clearly, one of the things you need to look at is what is available. Um, so with our Bard Colleges, um, the Creative Commons uh, um, Open Game License um, colleges are just College of Lore and College of Valor. Um, but we also do have other, um, a lot more um, that have come out since, you know, the uh, 5e was published originally. So I'm going to just pull that up on d and Beyond so that we can take a look at that. So we've got College of Creation so that uh, so Bard believes that the cosmos is a work of art. Um, College of Eloquence uh, Master of the Art of, uh, of Oratory uh, College of Glamour uh, they have mastered their craft in the vibrant realm of the Feywild or under tutelage of someone who dwelled there. Let's see. Bards of the College of Lore know something about most things, uh, collecting bits of knowledge. College of Spirits is uh, one that seeks, um, seeks tales with inherent power uh, using occult um, and spiritual trappings. College of Swords uh, are called Blades, so these are more tankier um, bards with daring feats of weapon prowess. We've got Valor, uh, they um, keep alive the memory of great heroes of the past and inspire new generation of heroes. College of Whispers, um, they appear to be like other bards, but in truth, uh, they're wolves among sheep, so kind of spies. Uh, and oh, we've got uh, some critical role content here, College of Tragedy. Um, Bards of the College of Tra Tragedy know that sorrow and pathos are emotions just as potent as joy and delight. So we don't really have anything in here that is um, College of Chaos, if you will. Um, so I think, uh, you know, when I'm writing some design notes here, it's going to be that, you know, this bard is, um, oh, hi, hi, Andy, nice to see you here. Um, you're just getting in as we're um, starting to create the, the lore around this, um, or background of this bardic college. Um, so we're looking at the College of Chaos, and um, I'm just going to write some notes here. And feel free to uh, add some notes in chat as well, because this is partially, mainly inspired by um, 
uh, our time with Mac Guffin in the solo RPG uh, delivered that just wrapped up recently on my Monday streams. So if there's anything that pops up, uh, you know, that you have um, uh, been inspired by uh, Mac uh, or you see sort of like a, a tie in, just let me know in chat. I'm going to put in here that um, we can put that it's inspired by Wild Magic. So it's chaos. Uh, delights in the unexpected. <laughs> trying to think of what else. Um... I do foresee us coming up with a with a sort of chaos table um, tied to bardic inspiration. I'm trying to think of what else um, we would do with chaos here. How would you describe accidentally being misinterpreted by others? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Um, I don't, I'm not sure. Thinking of the origin of her getting her job, they thought she was wise to what was going on, but wasn't. It worked in her favor. It was an ability of sorts that would fit well with the chaos part. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it's sort of, um, oh gosh, what is the word for that? There's got to be a word. Um, and it's not even willful, like subterfuge. It's more... Um, or deception, it's <laughs> je ne sais quoi. I'm gonna put in here, it's sort of uh, like, uh, part of it is failing up. Or, um, seeing failure as learning opportunities. I don't know if you can hear I my kid you, screaming, I love you, mom, through the door. I love you. I love you too, Grayson. Accidental subterfuge. <laughs> I know he's he's home from from preschool for he's been home for um, the past couple of weeks and uh, I haven't been streaming as a lot while he's at home. Failures, learning opportunities. I'm I'm gonna write down um, off camera co-streamer. Yes. <laughs> I was thinking about streaming um, Spirit Fair actually because he wants to watch me play because he saw um, he saw me watching uh, Cage's stream recently, um, but I'm trying to figure out a way of like keeping him off screen while I'm doing it. And I know that there's like um, like filters you can put on, but I, I haven't investigated further. So um, 
it's off screen. Um, accidental. I'm going to write this note here accidental or um, unintentional. Subterfuge. All right, um, what else do we need to do here with this? So we've got, um, we've got a bard who is inspired by wild magic, sows chaos, delights in the unexpected. Um, there's a, this concept of failing up or seeing failure as learning opportunities. Uh, and uh, this other idea of, you know, accidental or unintentional subterfuge. Um, Probably, probably enough to go on here. Um, now, um, when we look at the table for creating a bard, I, I think I'll try to pull it up on D and D Beyond here. Oh, maybe I did already. Here we go. Came prepared. So at third level, you're picking out your Bard College. Um, so they, your choice grants you features at third level and then you gain again as I mentioned, at 6th and 14th level. So we can just take a look here at some examples. So for College of Lore, you get your um, bonus proficiencies, but you also get something called cutting words. Um, and because it's, it's lore college, um, you're using your wit and everything to um, distract and confuse. So what we'll do here is we get in our, um, what was it called again? Bonus proficiencies. Um, nope. Bonus proficiencies. Insert. Blurb. And then um, college. No, we don't need to do that. We're doing, um, what is the feature that um, we're going to get at third level here? So because it's third level, we don't want anything too um, powerful. Um, I do see though, you know, if we're taking inspiration from wild magic, um, from sorcerer, the wild magic surge happens very early on with the sorcerer. So I'm wondering if we have this chaos energy that happens um, at third level and then we can come up with a table which we're going to have to do at a, I think at a different session or we could maybe start noodling around with that now and then divide this into um, it's going to be a two-part uh, design session anyway um, so we could look at doing um, a, a, a table of chaos magic um that could be fun um 
let's see. So I, for now, I think I'll just call it chaos magic unless uh, someone else has an idea. Coming up with a table together. Yeah, let's do that. Let's um, uh, for now, I'm going to say it's. Um, Bardic chaos or chaos working title right now. Um, chaos magic. All right, so I will just, um, I like the idea of it sort of being very similar to the wild magic table. It does require us to come up with about 50. Fifty items for the table because we're gonna we're gonna have a D one hundred here, and I think it it makes sense because um, that gives enough variability that this uh, chaos magic um, does seem fully chaotic versus you know if we just had ten prompts or even um, twenty prompts it wouldn't feel um, as variable. I'm not going to say that we necessarily need to come up with all 50 here. Um, however, um, we've got the D100 and then we have an effect here. Uh, and I do see here a very good call out rolling a one or two. Um, you know, it's like rolling a natural one. So, uh, in a in a wild magic surge, it's uh, it's saying that roll on this table at the start of each of your turns for the next minute. So I like the idea that if you roll a one <clears throat> for the next minute, you've just unleashed chaos and you're not going to be able to stop it. Um, so I like I like keeping that. But we ignore this result. Oops. This result on subsequent rolls. Mm. Okay, now we have three to four. Okay. <clears throat> So for the rest of these, uh, let's just think as much outside the box as possible, outside the table as possible. Um, don't wanna uh, veer too close to what um, Wild Magic does, um, you know, because we wanna make sure that the sorcerer and the bard feel very different. Um, we can look at some of the bardic um, spells that are available and um, use those as um, things that get, you know, fired off um, at random. Um, we can also look at, you know, some positives in that, you know, you know, bards grant bardic inspiration. So that can be something, maybe if it's a natural 20, um, you get, um, some kind of bardic boon. Entropy come to come into play for something, okay? Hi, Jane. Let's see. Um, so Jane, we are coming up with a um, chaos magic table for this College of Chaos Bard, inspired by Mac Guffin from our um, solo RPG delivered um, that I was playing on Mondays. Yep, we are just basically designing Mac, uh, Mac's 
uh, subclass if she were a D and D character. <laughs> But if you can think of anything um, interesting to put in this chaos magic table, that would be awesome. Um, it is inspired by a, a wild magic sorcerer, but I don't want to, um, you know, take from that table other than that first um, that first one, which I thought was really good because if you roll a natural one, you have to roll on this table for like a minute, which really um, could mess things up. <laughs> but in a fun way, right? Uh, just another Macnick Monday. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna take a look at um, Bardic Spells, um, just to see what we have access to. And I think um, what I'll do is I'll look at the Creative Commons license. So if you go to dnd.wizards.com slash resources slash systems reference, reference document, you can find this there. I will post it in chat so you have access to this. Oh, absolutely. There definitely has to be explosions involved because, oh my gosh, how many things exploded in that game? <laughs> Pretty much whenever she saw me eat, there would be an explosion at least. Randomly burst into song. Oh my gosh, these are great. All right, so we have this, uh, that link that I sent in there. Um, so there are two different versions of um, the open game license. One of them is a Creative Commons license that can be used by anyone. Um, it doesn't have everything in it, though. The other one is a, um, is a systems reference document, including the open game license. Um, and that one there um, can only be used in um, specific ways. So because I'm creating this for just us, I'm going to be using the Creative Commons license. And I will post that link here as well um, so that you can see what I'm using. Um, oops, wrong window. Here we go. Oh my gosh, you're all on a roll here. I gotta go through, I, gotta, I have to go through chat to catch up here. All right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm I'm not going to um, put these in the numerically in a table. I'm just going to capture all the ideas and then get this uh, into Patreon here. Here we go. Um, entropy. We're gonna gonna find a way to use that word there. Um, and then what do we have here? Uh, randomly burst into song. Explosions. <laughs> These are so good. Random rabbit. <laughs> Poor 
partial to the fate wild. Yes, that's amazing. Um, Very good. All right, these are awesome. Uh, all right, and I am looking at Bard. Okay. So. Uh, oh, I need Bard spells. Let's see if I can get this here. Okay, here we go. All right, so I think we're going to um, have occasional um, bursts of magic. Um, and we've got so bardic spells at, we've got cantrips like dancing lights, light, mage hand, mending, message, minor illusion, prestidigitation, true strike, vicious mockery. Maybe prestidigitation could be. Uh, I'm going to just put random magic. Prestidigitation. Um, Got a disguise self going off randomly. It could be pretty funny. Um, heroism is a good one, uh, like a positive that we could add here. Hideous laughter, of course. That one is. We have burst into song, burst into laughter would be another one. Um. Just gonna take a quick look here, I think. Most of the spells that randomly happen are, um, oh, some of them are actually pretty high on the sorcerer table. Some of them go up to fourth level. Oh my gosh, polymorph. <laughs> There's also a random reincarnate spell. Oh, and on 100, it says you regain all expended sorcery points. I bet you we could use that for bardic inspiration.
Great. What did I miss here while I was doing this? Uh, how about the opposite of what some of the spells would do? Instead of disguise self, one of the roles could result in having a spotlight shine. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, I'm going to move this onto another page so I can capture more. Oh my god, extreme charisma. <laughs> yes. Uh, inspired by AI me or Amy, extreme charisma. <laughs> so good. Oh, I love this one too. Oh wait, that was not, um, I love the rain cloud idea. They're so fun. <laughs> Jane the Geek, uh, you could have vicious mockery backfire and you stand there insulting yourself. It's like a you're roasting yourself. Um Oh, uh, this is, ah, oh, these are so good. Uh, insulting the animals around you. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, oh wait, that was so uh, keep getting these wrong. These are awesome. I cannot wait to get this uh this all written down. <laughs> all right. Um what other magic do we have here? I'm gonna take a look at the uh the Creative Commons license. Okay, so we do have, um, we can add a couple, uh, or at least one fourth level spell, I think, and uh, got hallucinatory terrain. I like that one. Uh, 
Um, there's a second level spell here um, that would be fun. It's a uh, magic mouth. Just, I don't know, if you just, I imagine something humorous happening with that. Um, invisibility is another just generally good one, I think. I think we can probably grab one fifth level. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, animate objects, awaken, dominate person, no, dream, chaos, hold monster, legend lore. Um, I don't know, animate objects. I see a lot of fun potential there. Awaken. I think it would, when I'm thinking about that spell, I think when it randomly goes off, you might, I don't know, would there be necessarily something around you that you could awaken? Let me just look at the write-up for that. Awaken. Alright. Um, after spending the casting time tracing magical pathways, oh, the casting time is eight hours. Although, I guess with chaos magic, it could just happen. Um, it has to be smaller, a huge or smaller beast or plant. So, you're not necessarily going to be in an area with that. So I'm going to say animate objects might be more likely. <laughs> like a baseball bat, not a flying bat, yeah. Let me check if there's an animal. We have an animal messenger um, for a bardic spell. Speak with animal. What was your suggestion here? Yeah, Animal Messenger would actually do that. Maybe not wrong message, but um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Compromising info. Hiccups. 
hiccups or sneezing for a minute. That would be great. Um, let's move all this down here. Oh yeah, Jane. That's interesting. We uh I think it's I think what you're talking about is called broken telephone here. Uh let's see message. Let's let me see. I think message, yeah, message is a cantrip for uh, bards. All right. Gosh, uh, we have uh, created so many, um, but we haven't even touched, like, I don't even know if we've got half of what we need. Um, however, we're um, running out of time here. Um, I think, uh, well, we can continue uh, having this conversation uh, in, uh, in my Discord if you want. Um, I'll just... Uh, pick away at, at this table, I think, and possibly add some more, um, more content. And I might put some, I might, I think what I'll do is I'll put my notes onto my Patreon um, uh, and see if we, um, if we can just sort of uh, develop this further. And then in next week's uh, game design lab, we'll continue creating this bard of the College of Chaos I am also having so much fun with this. Um, I'm glad that you could all join today. Um, this is really a hilarious. Um, but I think I, I think this would be a very fun um, subclass to play so far um, because of that wild um, chaotic magic around this bard uh, and just never really knowing what's going to happen. <laughs> Save it for Discord. Okay. Um, Yes. Well, thank you all very much again. Um, thank you for the support and for just being in chat and coming up with these really cool ideas. Um, I will post my journal notes um, as soon as I can, and then we can continue creating this um, bard. And, you know, we might not finish next week either. Uh, it might take, you know, three, um, three sessions to uh, finish this bard. We'll see. It depends on uh, how much further we get with this um, random table and also um, designing the other two features that we still have to do. Um, aw, yeah, I do want to, I, I, I do want to try to play this character at some point. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, anyway, uh, I think uh, I, I am still streaming on Friday. I'm going to be streaming my, um, my craft. I, don't know if this is going to be finished by then. It's very possible it will be finished by then, so I'll be moving on. But here's my Cult of the Lamb, all hail the lamb, um, that I've been working on. I got um, some black floss for Christmas, uh, so I'm able to finish it. Um, I'm very excited about eventually hanging this up on the wall behind me there, on the door behind me there, along with some other um, geeky things. But I 
I'm pretty sure I'm gonna this is gonna be finished by Friday, so I'll have to find uh, something else. I did get um Pokemon um cross stitch book for uh, Christmas also. Um, so it might be this, or it might be Spirit Fair, um, or maybe a gift that I'm trying to finish for Brittany. We'll see. Um, it'll be a surprise, I guess. Um, so I will uh, hopefully see you on Friday. Otherwise, I'll see you online. Um, hope you had a lovely holiday, and thanks again for joining. All right, everyone, take care.